I'm Bob. I like coffee. I also like to tell stories. So here at the Bobcast Coffee, it's time for a coffee break. So take a coffee break with me and pour yourself a cup of your favorite joke. By the time you're done with your coffee, you'll know something about me you really didn't need to know. But you'll have fun learning it. Just remember, my stories are true. For the most part. This episode was brought to you by JM Insurance. JM Insurance. Do you have business, personal, or life insurance yet? Contact JM Insurance Agency to understand the benefits of insuring against the unforeseen circumstances of life. We have over 40 years of experience in the business and will guide with the best probable choice for your situation. Call us for more information at 405-353-0140 or visit our website at jminsurance.agency. Today I am enjoying my coffee once again from my Camp Cherry Valley mug. Uh, this is not the original Camp Cherry Valley mug. That one died in a horrible accident and shattered into many pieces. This is the one that was found at a garage sale in Oklahoma, of all places. So, Cherry Valley. It was a fun place for Boy Scouts to go in California. Interesting. We'll have to tell some uh, Cherry Valley stories here soon but today hang on one second oh yeah today we are going to be telling a story um, one that does not make Bob look good and um, we will be using one very vulgar word today and I'm going to be using it to teach a lesson this is a lesson on respecting your elders, on um, proper crime and punishment, on how you'll, you're just going to have to find out. You'll see it. All right. So we are talking about Bob at the age of, I want to say 11, 11 which would be the last year we were at the Zorro House in Surrey Hills on 116th. It was a very nice place to live and a very hard place to learn a lesson. So what we, what we ended up doing was this. I would get home from school. I'd get the bus. Bus would drop me off at the top of the street, and then I would walk down to the house and let myself in. Not a big deal. Uh, Mom was teaching, uh, dad's working, Rick's up, you know, in school. So, I mean, it's, we're doing the normal family thing. And I would come home, and of course, being Bob, I'd make a snack, plop down in front of the TV, and just really basically not do anything. And I'm going to tell you, you should do something. You should always do something positive when you get home. It makes you feel better, but not Bob. Bob was being lazy. So my mom would come home and want to know why this isn't done or this isn't done almost every day. You know, why are there dirty dishes on the counter and not, you know, put away? You know, you can wipe down a plate. Eh, Bob was lazy. Well, if you can understand this is happening every day, day in and day out. And this is kind of mean to my mom. It really is. So one afternoon, I come home from school. I'm laying there in the living room floor. My mom comes in the front door. She heads back to um, her bedroom, drops some stuff off down there. And I can hear her coming back down the hall turning the light off in my bedroom, turning the hall light off, turning the light off in the bathroom. The bathroom that my brother and I shared had a sink area and then the toilet and the bathtub area. And she had to turn both of those lights off. 
And she comes in and she's standing at the front door because the way our house was shaped, you, we had a, a little half wall between the living room and the entry hallway. And she walked up and she's standing there. And we had a sunken living room. So it's about, oh, I would say six inches drop from the entryway into the living room. And she's standing there. I need you to picture my mom. Five foot two, 107 pounds if she was soaking wet. And my mom is standing there at that step. And she starts going off at me. And, you know, little Bob, this is unjust. Why am I getting yelled at? Well, she's going off because I didn't put the new toilet paper roll on the toilet paper dispenser. I just left it sitting on the back of the toilet. And left that empty roll right there. Which means she had to go do that. After turning out all the lights that I had left on. And understand, she hasn't even been into the kitchen. Because every light in the kitchen's on too. Dining room, kitchen, all that. So she starts yelling at me. For me to get up off my butt. And go in there. And put that toilet paper on the toilet paper roll. And I stand up indignant. And I stand up and I look at my mom and I say, you know, what's all this about? No, I didn't say anything smart. I looked at her and said, shut up, you bitch. Let that sink in. Let that sink into anybody's head that's listening to this. Those are the words you just said to your mother. I think that any punishment I received from that point is fair. And what I really appreciate is that this is a lesson that I learned that I will never forget. I'm 60 years old now. And this is still as fresh in my mind. And I promise you, I think about it anytime I get upset with anybody. My mom five foot two. I mean, she's shorter than me, basically, or at my height. I mean, she's maybe a little taller. I mean, I'm not a tall kid, but she's standing up on this step. So she's just a little bit higher than me. And she just looks at me and I can see her set her shoulders. Right. And I'm like, well, that was kind of weird. And she steps down into the sunken living room and she brings her hand up and frames my face with this hand while pulling this hand back and jabbing as hard as she can right into my face. Now, I'm going to tell you that my mom hit me right below the eye, corner of the nose, and the top of the mouth, all in one shot. It was about as perfect of a punch as you can imagine. This is the point where I should tell you that um, the way I've learned this, my grandfather Shoemake was a collegiate boxer back in his day. In fact, one of the top ranked, supposedly, collegiate boxers. And my mom's sister was much bigger than her. My mom's a small lady. Her sister was a very tall lady. So, I mean, you can see sibling rivalries, my mom would probably be on the losing end of a lot of that. So, my grandfather taught her how to box. Now, I'm sure she never went into any professional boxing, but with a little bit of knowledge and the ability to put this out, you know, put forth all effort into a decision, my mother has slid, never crossing her feet, slid up to me, framing my face, and hit with a perfect punch right in the face. Pops my head back, boom, I'm out on the ground. Out? How do I know that I was unconscious? Because when I came to, I'm seeing everything in sort of this hazy gray. 
and it slowly starts coming into focus and it's more like a black and white or maybe even like a negative as it's coming in and I'm sitting there going whoa what just happened and as everything starts to focus in and the color starts to come back I noticed that my mom has her feet on either side of my shoulder and she is coming down for another shot at this point fight or flight responses kick in I grab her leg throw her and I take off running with my mom hot in pursuit I go running all the way I, I don't dare slow down to turn into the bathroom or turn into my room I go all the way into the um, the master bedroom at the end of the hall and I slam the door behind me and she hits that door and it pulls open and I shove it back I grab the upright Hoover vacuum cleaner that happens to be standing there and I jam it under the doorknob you know you see him use a chair in the movies yeah, they don't use Hoover uprights. They, it don't work. She comes blasting through, and she goes for another punch, and I pull back as far as I can, and she catches me in the shoulder, which left a bruise. Now, I understand. Everybody here is sitting there going, well, one, if you know my mom, you could not imagine this happening, which is also one of the positive effects of this lesson. My mother is the sweetest woman you'll ever meet. You just want to hug her and hold her forever. But I pushed the line. In fact, I, I stepped over the line. Uh, quoting friends, the line looks like a dot to me. I am so far over the line. I think any other response in 19... This would have been 70... Four. The other response I would have taken as weak and useless. Ground me, make me oh, make me do extra chores, something like that. Not that that's not gonna help. This was instant repercussion of a heinous crime. So that was the end of that. I so I thought. So I come, uh, I get up, I, I go to my bedroom. Actually, first thing I do is I go put the toilet paper on the toilet paper roll. I may be an idiot, but I'm not that dumb. Second, I go to my room and I stay there. Well, later, my brother comes home. And he walks into the bedroom he needs to borrow something or take something or whatever, or I've got something of his, I don't know. But he comes in and he looks at me and he goes, who beat you up? I go, mom. And he goes, no, no, no. Who beat you up? I'll, I'll go, I'll go to school. I will take care of this. I go, mom beat me up. He goes, quit lying to me. You don't have to protect anybody. Tell me, I will take care of this. And I said, it was mom. Mom beat me up. And my brother starts pushing me around to get the information out of me. It made no sense. But he did not believe me that mom was the one that, that put me down. So, after getting roughed up by my brother, and he never did believe me for several years, we eventually moved from the Surrey house to, uh, to Yukon and then sold that house and moved back to Surrey Hills to a new house in Surrey and uh, I believe it's the house my dad says the one he should have never sold and my brother is home he's basically now back you know he's he's a man and he's back from basic training and he comes walking in the house and my mom looks at him and says, hey, I've got some friends coming over for cards. Would you clean up your room? And Rick said, no, I got I to gotta go. My friends are waiting for me out in the car. And she goes, no, I really need you to at least straighten up the room a little bit. I've got friends coming over. And my brother laughs at her and says, you can't make me do anything. And she immediately, I'm standing in the hall behind my brother during this. And I see her set her shoulders and her hips, boom, 
And I went, oh, I remember this. And boom. Gives Rick, yeah, this is, I'll be honest, this is nothing like Bob. But she just gave him a love tap right in the chest. And Rick goes, do you think that really hurt me? And she gets mad and storms off. And then he turns around and exhales and goes, <gasps> looks at me like, what was that? I think he got hit by a little itty bitty sledgehammer. And he went in and straightened up his room. He believed me from that point on. So today, kids would be calling, you know, police. There would be news cameras and all that. Because, oh, how, how could you possibly do that to your child? I am absolutely 100% glad she did that. Because my mom taught me the best lesson about respecting not only your elders, your mother. Your mother is one of the most important people on the planet. And you should never, ever. In fact, here you go. Here's the rules for mom. One, mom is always right. Rule number two, if mom is wrong, revert to rule number one. If you can live by those, you will be happy because that's what your mom deserves. So I hope you understand that not only do I have one of the most adorable, loving moms you could ever want. In fact, I've had other kids want to trade their mom for my mom and say, nope, nope, she's mine. But she's also smart enough to know when to teach a lesson and when to teach it right. God bless my mom. I think she's made me a better person. Until next time, happy coffee drinking.